Hey guys, what's up? So welcome to this tutorial series on React. So in this series, we are going to be building the front end of an API we built in one of the series that we did before. So I've arranged the features that we're going to build here, at least initially. So we start out by setting up the project boilerplate using create react app. And then we will set up a project structure that will enable us to use the fax pattern without actually using Redux. So we'll be using the context API in combination with use reducer to achieve something that Redux will give you. So you, we get global state management for the application. So we'll also set up SaaS to work with the project. We'll go ahead and set up Axios. So we will build on the Axios library to create an Axios instance that can enable us to reuse some functionality when we are making requests. We'll also look at create at environment variables We'll set up React Router, we'll implement lazy loading for the route so our application startup time can be improved a lot. Then we'll register a user, log in a user. Then we'll go ahead and set up Firebase to enable us to store images. So we'll be able to store our contacts images like you see here inside Firebase. Then we'll go ahead and work on basically the contacts CRUD. And after that, I'll show you how to set up an Axios interceptor to make sure that whenever we get like authentication errors from the server, we automatically log out the user. So we'll implement user logout. I'll show you how you can reinitialize context, our application state basically. Then we'll go ahead and set up a slider. So this would be the slider. We will put these arrows so users can actually use the arrows to navigate around. Uh, they can, yeah, scroll by just swiping left and right. So from that, we'll go ahead and see how to search for contacts. For example, here, you can come in here and search for, let's say, Alexis Sanchez. And see, you get Sanchez. So implementing a feature like that, then I'll show you how you can like sort these contacts so you can change the order of how you view them. Then we'll go ahead and make the application a PWA. So if you're not familiar with what PWAs are, it's basically short for progressive web apps. So that allows you to take a web application and have it installable on, on, a, on a computer or a phone. So for example, here, actually I have the, the icon for the application I'm going to be building open. So you can see that when I open it up, it, it opens up and yeah, so it boots up and we basically have the application. So you see, it's now running. You see, we have the titles. If I come over here up, you can see that we have the window for all the applications on the map, and it would behave similarly for, for Windows or, or Linux. There's no extra setup needed for that. So yeah, so we'll do that. And after that, we'll go ahead and deploy the application to Netlify. And yeah, so it's gonna be interesting. If you're someone who's looking for a way to start using the new React hooks and replace Redux in your applications, this is basically a very good way to do it. And you realize that it's actually similar to using Redux. And if you know Redux, this is going to be like really easy because they like borrow the same concepts that Redux uses. So the API that we are going to be consuming is here. So it's here hosted on Heroku. And we built this in one of the previous series. I will leave a link for those in the description if you want to see how we build, we build the API. Uh, so th this is a documentation. So we'll be referring to this to create any features on the front end. So this is a swagger one. We also have a read up one. So you can also use this one if you want. So whichever floats your boat, you'll be able to, to use this as a documentation. So I have an account logged in here and basically to show you the features. We basically have this Caruso slider where we can slide and we see, we view like uh, contacts from side to side. Clicking on a contact, actually I made see in a contact detail model where you can see the contact details. So yeah, you can go ahead and remove it from the stars list. So the stars list are these favorites, or you can add it. So you see when we remove it, it basically removes the shade here. When we add it again, it keeps the shade. Uh, we can edit it. So I can click there and maybe change Alexis to Alex and save this. Once I do that, it is synced on the server and also we get the update here. Okay, so looking good. So we'll also be able to create image thumbnails. So for example, you can see this person is called Aman Jin and their thumbnail is AJ. So if we create a contact here and we don't supply the picture, let's say we say Greg Fred. So let's say, let's pick a random country here. So we'll be able to see how you can create that kind of pick actually. 
and just give them a contact. I'm not going to be adding them to the favorites, so I'm going to click Submit. So they are synced on the server and they are created, added to our list, and you can see that they have a, a random thumbnail given to them. Okay, good. So let me log out here and show you how the authentication will work. So we'll have a registration feature. Anyway, so to show you how the, registra the registration will work, I want to show you how we'll be handling like errors from the server. So we are going to have a very minimal validation on the front end for only empty values. So the goal for this is show you how you can sync errors from the server if there are any with specific fields. So now you can see if I click register, you can see that we get the password error. So if I go ahead and fill a password that meets this criteria, it's going to go ahead and validate another input and you see we actually point to the exact field that the user needs to, to fill. So of course we could actually show the errors at once, but then I figured this can be an easier way for the user to manage which fields to fill when they get errors. So I'm going to fill this one at gmail.com. Let's say they are using a username that's taken. I'm going to use, I'm going to use one of the users that I have. So now if I click register, you can see that we get the username taken error and the field is highlighted. So let me go back to John Terry. So actually we used to call him JT. So let's sign up at JT. All right, so once we finish the sign up process, you can see that we got the login page and the username is persisted. So that is coming in from the registration reducer. So we'll be able to see how we can basically use the global state across any, any part of our application. So let me log in here with the password. And once I log in, we can see that we have a welcome JT and we basically have no contacts now. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can create a contact. So like I said, you can create a contact with a picture which gets uploaded to Firebase or not. So I'm gonna create a simple user here. So let's say this one is Fabio Cannavaro. Uh, so the country, this one is from Italy, but I'm gonna pick a random one. Then we have a phone number and the validations will be client side. So here we can have the number and then I can click submit. So once I do that, you can see that Fabio Canavaro is created and we can see them in our contacts list. So if I click here, I can decide to star him. So once I click star, you can see that he's added to our stars list. So I can remove him. If I click on star, you can see that we get a success and he's removed from the star list. Okay, good. So to show you how the lazy loading will work, if I go to, if I log out here and then reload the page, you can see that we get a simple loading there and then the route is loaded on demand. So now if you watch when I click on sign up, because now the application was restarted and we don't have the sign up loaded, if I click there, you can see that simple load there. So we load the route asynchronously on demand and this helps us get a very great improvement in the load time of our application. So it's gonna be interesting. If you're interested in this project, I recommend you subscribe to the channel so you turn on notifications for when I post new videos and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.